So here's a short video on how to divide decimals if you're using the partial quotients division method. So our key question here is what happens if there's a remainder? So we're going to walk through a couple of examples here and then just talk about what do you do differently if there is a remainder and you're using a partial quotient strategy. So the first problem that I'm going to work out for you is just the whole number 14 divided by the whole number 5. So if we set this up, we're looking at how many fives go into the value 14. So with the partial quotient strategy, you use whatever numbers you're comfortable with. Um, I know that I can do two groups of five, which is 10. But having four extra to be shared between five people means that that's the remainder. So now what do we do? Well, we're going to use a zero with the remainder but when we do that, what we're doing is we're kind of changing the place value of everything. So the um, original problem is going to get a decimal after the dividend total, which is the 14, and a zero on that value. And on here, we'll put a zero there. But the other step that we'll have to do is record a separate partial quotient value, something that's separate from two wholes. So I'm going to draw a split over here. And when I do uh, bundles of five from the number 40, I know that eight groups of five gives me exactly 40. But I'm going to put that on my other side of the partial quotient here. So eight groups gives me everything and we're all done when we have no remainder. So once there's no remainder, we're all finished and we're ready to total up our quotients. Well, in the original part of our quotients, there was just two. And in the other part of our partial quotients, the separate part that we extended our problem, there's eight. So we're using the digits two and eight as part of our answer. Now we have to know where to place our decimal. So we look back and we count. There's one place of decimal in the original problem, meaning that my answer also needs one decimal place here. So the decimal will get placed between the two and the eight, meaning if five people split $14, they would each end up with $2.08 or $2.80. Let's try another one. So the next problem, we're going to start off with the total dividend 35 and 2 tenths. We're going to split that into bundles of fives again. Set this up to be our partial quotients arrangement. Ignore that decimal. It doesn't even need to be in the problem as we're splitting. So I'm really thinking about splitting up the number 352. I know that 20 groups of five is always going to give me bundles of 100. So if I have a group of 100, I can take another bundle of 20. So I'm going to start off with a bundle of 20. I see I can also take a bundle of 20, making this another 100 smaller. And I can do another bundle of 20, making this 100 smaller. I know that I can do a group of 10. 10 groups of 5 is 50. I can't take a full group of 5 from 2, which means that would be my remainder. So with the remainder, the tips are add a 0 to the remainder. Also add a, um, a 0 with the dividend total in the original problem. So it's like if you place it down here, we have to place it up here as well. It doesn't change the value. 35 and 2 tenths is the same thing as 35 and 20 hundredths, or like $35 in two dimes is really 20 cents. So we're not changing the value. We're just making it so we can split it. It's like take that dollar, split it into some coins so that we can split up the coins now. Separate that wall to do a new partial quotient. So 5 goes into 20, I know, four exact times. Notice that I didn't put it on the side with my original partial quotient amount. 
Now I'm ready to total up all of my pieces. So if I bundle up all of these, 20, 20, 20, and 10, would give me 70. And then the four is a four because there's nothing else over there to bundle it with. The digits of my answer are going to be a 704. Notice that it's not 74. Um, we're not combining the partial, the separate partial quotient into the original partial quotient value. They're two separate sections of partial quotients. So we know that this is going to be 704. But now we have to figure out where the decimal goes. So we count the places of decimals in the um, original problem. Here's one and here's one, meaning my answer also needs to have this one and this one. So we're really going to use 7.04 or 7 and 4 hundredths. If five people split $35.20, they would each end up with $7 and 4 pennies. Let's try another one. This time I'm going to take the amount 10 and 8 tenths, and I'm going to split it into groups of eights. So set up my partial quotient math problem here. I'm going to ignore that decimal again until later, and I'm going to start splitting. Well, I know that um, there's five bundles of eight, and that's a 40 value. Do all of that subtraction and that good borrowing that we need. I can do another group of 40, five more groups. I know that 8, 16, 24 is available with three groups of eight. But if I have four leftovers, eight can't split four evenly. So this is where I need to come down here and use a zero idea. So I'm going to place a zero on the end of my remainder. And when I do that, I have to place it on the end here. And then I'm going to split and make a separate column for the rest of my splitting math. And now I'm ready to split. I know that I can get five bundles of eight from 40. And when I do that, I end up with no remainder. So our, our goal is to really end up with no remainder here. Now I'm going to total up all my partial quotients, but remember there's two separate parts. Think of it as being like whole number and decimals. So 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. And a 5 on this side. So we're using the digits 1, 3, 5. Now I need to place a decimal. I'm going to count how many places of decimal were in the original problem. We had hundreds and tenths on this one. Remember when we extended it, we really are changing um, the amount of places. So my decimal um, would be placed hundreds and tenths as well on my answer, or 1 and 35 hundredths. So $10.80 split between eight people evenly is $1.35 each. I hope this helps divide with decimals. If you're using the partial quotient strategy and there ends up being a remainder.